Thank you, Admiral Fowler. We, uh, the comments I made in the opening statement, I, I'm, I'm very sincere about because a lot of people don't realize when they look at all the comms that we have around, uh, did we ever have the, the right resources relative to the threat that are posed? And so I'm going to ask you each the same question which I've worded very carefully because we hear from so many people who are not aware of the threat that, to our national security that you would find in Southcom and, and, and in Africa. Why does it really matter in terms of our national security? And I'm going to start with you, Admiral Fowler. You've, you've, you've touched on it. I know you believe in it, but the question would be why should the American people care what um, China and Russia are doing in Africa and Latin America? And specifically, how does what they are doing threaten our national security? I know the president's very interested in this. He wants to make sure that we're not, uh, we don't have resources places that don't have a direct threat on our national security. I'd like to have you uh, restate what the direct threat is out there to our national security in your realm. Senator, this region matters. It's, uh, it's the cultural values. It's the extensive interaction we have in trade. We have a positive trade balance with, uh, with the region, but mm -hmm. that's eroding. Uh, and, and we are the number one trading partner. China's fast uh, catching, that, uh, catching us in that regard. Panama Canal strategic access, two-thirds of the, the traffic that goes through that has an economic direct tie to the United States. I look around the region and I see China working on multiple port deals. IT infrastructure, uh, dams, mining, logging, fishing, including a significant illegal fishing, illegal mining, and illegal logging. And, uh, and look at the port access that they're pursuing in El Salvador, Jamaica, Bahamas. I ask myself the question, why would China want to buy an island and lock up a 99-year lease for most of the coast of El Salvador, right here within a two-hour flight of the continental, continental United States? They're trying to achieve positional advantage right here in our neighborhood, and that's alarming and concerning to me. And it drives the sense of urgency with which I, I look at this uh, competition. Yeah, you know, the terrorists that are out there, it's, um, we're not really talking about just locally there, even in El Salvador or in the rest. You are the door to this country uh, right through your area, and I think you've stated that very well. And the same thing to you, uh, General Townsend. You know, we have... I think I may not have mentioned this in the uh, opening statement, but when you, if you're looking for places to save, it, it, uh, I can't see that you'd find it there. I mean, you have a total, what, 6,000, 6,500 people in the whole uh, continent. Of that, most of those, uh, 4,000 of those are in Djibouti. Uh, and that's, that's, of course, they have other missions outside of, of the continent of Africa. But it gets, when you go to West Africa, you've only got, what, 1,200, 1,300 people. Now, and, and so it's not like the other comms with 75, 80, and 100,000 uh, people. And if, if what you're trying to accomplish is to reduce our uh, footprint around the world. So in, specifically in, in Africa, uh, uh, talk about how that directly affects our national security. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so you, you ask why should America care uh, for about Africa for a lot of the same reasons that Admiral Fowler talked about, America caring about South America, although it's a little bit more geographically distant. Uh, the strategic access that America needs to the African continent rests on the fact that it's that global crossroads I talked about in my opening statement. Uh, there's also tremendous natural resources there uh, to include rare earth minerals that uh, America needs. Uh, there's also a burgeoning population there, and that's, there's good and, news with, uh, good and bad news with that. It's potential, tremendous potential opportunity for the future, also significant risk. I think that uh, in the past, maybe we've been able to pay less attention to Africa and it, it be okay for America. I don't believe that's the case for the future. As far as the threats go that you ask about, uh, China and Russia are every bit as busy in uh, Africa today and for the same reasons that Admiral Fowler talked about them being busy in South America. They are uh, a acting on their own behalf for positional advantage, uh, and uh, Russia in particular seeking extractive, uh, uh, pursuing extractive ventures. Um, so China and Russia are seeking to counter the strategic access that we need for American security and American prosperity. 
secondly, uh, the, v the violent extremist organizations that are on yeah. the continent, both mm -hmm. in the East and in the West. Um, some of those groups uh, threaten uh, the American homeland today. Uh, some of them will potentially be a threat in the future, t yeah. future years. Yeah, I, mean, I appreciate that, and I'm glad you mentioned in your opening statement um, the IMET program, because, uh, you know, the China realizes what we've done with that program, how, how that, well that has served us, and so they're now emulating that. They actually had a meeting in Beijing with, uh, I think they had all 52 countries represented there, talking about how they were going to expand that program, put more money in it, and, uh, and that, that you're watching that, I'm sure, very carefully throughout your, your whole area. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, Chairman. Okay, good. Uh, Senator Reid. Well, 